Hi, Corinne. Hi, Natalie. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, we're so excited to have you. And we were, when we were introing you and just reading your intro, we were like, okay, we need to talk to this woman. (laughs) We need you. I just have to say now, I am terrible at budgeting. And we don't, we, this episode isn't about budgeting, but we will have you back on because it's rough out here for me. It's tough. Yes. It's (laughs) so much harder than it seems. You know, you think, oh, I just do a budget. It's not that easy. It's it's not. It's It's not easy because it's, well, and it's like a a living, breathing document. So things change. And then when it changes, you're thinking, am I doing this wrong? And it's not that you're doing it wrong at all. And it's not that you're bad at it. It's just that that's the way it's meant to be sometimes. Yes. It just changes. And and you know, we ask ourselves, am I doing Doing this this right? right? (laughs) Hence the name of our our (laughs) podcast. So you are actually a budget expert who talks about debt and coaches women on how to live a debt-free life, but this is a personal topic for you, right? Mm -hmm. So can you explain your journey with debt and kind of how you got to where you are now? Of course. So my husband and I got, got married. I was 24 years old and we accidentally got pregnant on our honeymoon. And when we realized we were pregnant and it was a lot sooner than I had anticipated having children years before I was like, it was even on my radar. We realized that we could not afford daycare payments. Mm. So I'm a teacher, he's a teacher. And once we found out we, you know, were pregnant, I was like, okay, well, how much does daycare cost? It it was $800 and there was no room. There was no room in our spending for $800. So we sat down and we were like, what do we need to change? What do we need to do? And we totaled up our debt. It was our first time ever totaling up our debt. And we had over $111,000 worth of student loans and car loans that did not even include our mortgage. And our minimum payments were over $1,400 a month. And I was like, we could send one and a half kids to daycare for our minimum like debt payment. And so that's when we decided to really kind of take back control, spend less, pay off debt. So that way, you know, we had this basically this countdown for us. We had nine months to free up this cash flow. And so that's exactly what we did. And then we kept going. We grew our family, had another kid, and we paid it all off on two teacher salaries in four and a half years. Wow. That is in that is incredible. And it just made me curious when you're talking about this, like how many people don't I mean, you were married before you guys really sat down and were like, okay, mm-hmm. oh, like, yeah. how much do we have together? And we we spoke to another um, expert before about like sitting down before you get married to be like, okay, mm-hmm. what are we going to, this is the financial not that it would picture. determine anything, yeah. but right. still just like having that conversation. Cause I feel like so many people never sit down to actually calculate like how much are we even paying every yeah. month? And like, that is $1,400. It's so much money. Mm-hmm. I know it was more than our mortgage at the time. And we never had the conversation ever, never once in our dating life and our, you know, engagement did I think to say like, okay, how, how do we make this money thing work? Because it was not a concern on for me and it wasn't a concern for him. So right. we were just kind of living you know, in abundance in, in many ways, just overspending. We were overspending. We were racking up debt. Didn't, wasn't even aware until you take both of those debts and you put them together and you realize it's over a hundred thousand dollars. And you're sitting there thinking, I'm just an elementary school teacher. How do they expect me to pay this back? Right. And, um, you know, so it, it was, it was a process. It was difficult. I say four and a half years. And now it feels like it was like, oh, that's just a short time. And it, and it is a short time in the span of an entire life. But that's a, when you're, yeah. yeah, when you're in it, when you're doing it, when you're paying off the debt, it's lengthy. And there were many times we wanted to give up, but you know, we, we didn't, we saw this light at the far, far, far <laughs> end of the tunnel, <laughs> very far away. And we just kept going in that direction. Yeah. I mean, you seem so like, like you had this challenge and you were so aware of like, okay, let's overcome it. Um, and, and budgeting was your way of doing that. I mean, were you always financially literate or like, <laughs> <laughs> like no girlfriend? No, no. Okay. So I remember hating math. I thought like, okay, well money is math. I don't like math. Therefore I must be bad at money. I had to go to tutoring and math. And I, you know, you you know, so therefore I'm not going to be good with money and handling my finances. So I just pretty much scraped by, I didn't, I was just made sure I had just enough to not go negative. That was my goal. Don't go negative. You don't go negative, then you're doing well. And that was my entire philosophy. And when we started this journey and I realized, okay, 
we laid it all out. We laid out all of our expenses. And I saw that our student loans and car loans were taking up that huge chunk of money every month, which was half of my paycheck as a teacher. Mm. I was like, something has to change. We're going to budget and we're going to budget, but we're only going to do it until we become debt free because I don't like to budget. And what's crazy is that, you know, what they say is like 21 days to build a habit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once you I did it, you were hooked. <laughs> well, and I don't even think it's 21 days. Like I think that doing it and managing my money better and taking back that control became part of my identity. Mm-hmm. And so by the time, you know, for four and a half years, when it becomes part of who you are and part of your identity and you see the, you know, you see the, the positives that it brings you then I couldn't not budget afterwards. I couldn't not, I couldn't Mm. stop. And so then I realized that I had this skill set of teaching, very talented teacher, and I had this passion for personal finances and I needed to combine them. Was there any um, like resources you leaned on when you were first starting to budget? Like how did you even learn how to do that? how did you start? You know, I, I think back, there was not a lot. There was Dave Ramsey and I was like, he's so old and, (laughs) you know, like, and and I feel like he uses a lot of shame and guilt Mm. to, to teach and to motivate people. And so there was him and then like Susie Orman. However, whenever we were in our journey, in the middle of our journey, um, I would listen to Farnoosh Tarabi's podcast called So Money Mm. as like my motivation. And that was something that kept me going whenever I was like, this is, I'm done. I'm done sending, <laughs> you know, we were sending a majority of my paycheck to debt every month. So we were living off of, of not a lot. Um, but I would say just reading, reading Dave Ramsey's book, but, uh, but it's not what I would recommend now. <laughs> right. right. But you have um, your own, you have your own website now. Right, so yeah, right. I have my own website, <laughs> but budget. yes, but it just took a lot of practice. It took a lot of implementation. Our first budget was trash. It was, mm-hmm. you know, we blew our first budget within the first week. It <laughs> took a, you know, solid three months for us to really figure out what we were doing and figure out what was going to work for us. And what works for us wasn't what other people were necessarily, necessarily saying to do. Mm-hmm. We just had to figure out our own unique situation and how to make it work. And so that's, you took that knowledge and then you started Inspired Budget, right? Yes. So instead of just saying like, okay, this is what your budget's going to look like. Instead, what I do as a former teacher is I teach specifically women how to actually create a budget that works for them, that is unique to them, that they can stick to or modify when things go wrong so that they can pay off debt, save money, have a safety net and build wealth. Oh, we love it. Oh, we love all of that. And I mean, you said that you work with women and I feel like women, one, we struggle even talking about money or finances. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I mean, there's a, a we could go down a different route with that oh, yeah. as to why maybe women don't feel that way. Mm-hmm. But why do you think it is important for women to speak up about the debt that they have or to acknowledge it or to mm-hmm. um, confide in others, you know, their girlfriends, whoever, um, mm-hmm. about their debt? So I realized this recently, but what I realized is I was living this years ago, years ago, when we totaled up our debt, I remember feeling so ashamed. Mm. I remember feeling like I was, it felt paralyzing. I felt like I was standing at the bottom of this mountain. I was looking up and I was like, I don't even know how to get to the top. I don't know what tools to do. And, and God forbid I tell someone because then they'll think I'm irresponsible. They'll think I'm dumb. They'll think that I, you know, that I'm a failure. Like, how am I a failure? And I'm only 24. How has this happened? And I remember feeling all of those things and being too scared to talk about it. And um, now I have women coming to me telling me, I feel like having all this debt or having debt or taking out student loans means that I'm a failure as a wife. Mm -hmm. I'm a failure as a mom. I'm a failure as a woman, as a daughter. They tell me that they think they're single women who say, who will ever want to love me and be in a committed relationship with me if I'm bringing in like a burden yeah. yes mm-hmm. and it's like oh my gosh I think that with men and women are different and I feel like women attach debt to their identity mm, yeah. so much and and then what I did was I attached getting out of debt you know I attached taking ownership over my money as part of our identity but just in the reverse we can attach that negative to our identity and automatically assume that we are not worthy 
Right. So like you, you were saying that, you know, women and men think differently about mm-hmm. debt. How do you think men see debt in relation to themselves? I think they compartmentalize it and they just say, this does not mean anything about me. Mm, it's something de- it's something it's, separate, it's, right? It's just a thing. It's just money. It's just a thing, right? Like my husband and this entire process, he was never emotional about the process. I was because mm. the process to me made it feel like it was something that meant something about me. Right. And, it's and so vulnerable. it's so vulnerable. Yes. And you know, you know, there's so many people that are scared to open up about it because then w- what does that mean about them and will they be judged? And so I'm kind of like this safe place where you can come to me and I won't judge you and I won't shame you and say, why did you do that? Right. I, I tell women that we all have past money choices. They're not necessarily, we're not even going to call them mistakes because when we call them mistakes, you're already like that shame and that guilt starts setting in. Mm -hmm. Your past money choices may not be serving you now, but it doesn't mean we can't make choices now to serve us and help us in the future. Yeah. 100%. And and how do you think women can, can can combat that overwhelming feeling of having debt? Like are there some beyond what you just said, like mindset mm-hmm. changes or even just actual um you know strategies that they mm-hmm. could do to to combat that like overwhelming the feeling overwhelming. of like where do I like you were saying you were at the bottom like looking yes. up like how am I going to get out mm-hmm. of this? I think that knowledge is power. Yeah, we knowledge agree. Is we say it all power. the time. Yes. No, knowledge is power. So there's two things. Number one, you need to know your money and your money habits. Your money, like whether we like it or not, we are going to be dealing with money for the rest of our lives. So if we don't, I mean, right? And yeah, and yeah. yet, and yet, so many people don't make it a priority in their lives because it's scary, because it's overwhelming, because it's stressful, because there's all these other things we need to deal with in life that sometimes the things that implement us the most and impact us the most fall on the back burner. So we have to, there's knowledge in knowing your numbers, knowing your spending habits, knowing your spending triggers, knowing how much debt you have, knowing the goals, knowing how much you want to save for retirement. There Mm -hmm. is power in that. So first know your own finances. And then I would say, be open to learning, Mm -hmm. reading articles, spending time listening to podcasts to help you no longer feel like this is a foreign language, yeah. which, right? Like there's some, we, we can take classes. On, did you have classes about this? No, no we're both creative people. And so yeah. like my last math class was my- I was a freshman it, in college. Yeah. I didn't even take it in college. I took it in high school. And so like, I know nothing. I, I graduated college not knowing anything about money at okay. all. Zero. Well, I was a- graduated with a teaching degree and still knew nothing about it. Like I'm right there with you. Like yeah. my last math college, my, my last math class in college was a class about how to teach math to little children. Right. That like that's not, so, you. but you know, it's just, it, it, and in high school, I know they have like business and economics, but I think that, you know, it's not relatable back when I took high school, it was not relatable to me. Mm-hmm. So these things aren't taught. So when we go into this world and all of these phrases are swirling around and we're sitting in here thinking, I don't know what it is, people shut down. And so when you're yeah. open to learning, even whenever it seems like a foreign concept or a foreign topic, when you're open to learning, then that's investing back in yourself. Mm. So I would say, I would say do those two things. Know your numbers, knowledge is power, know your numbers, and then start learning more about personal finances. And I'm not saying like, you need to learn everything. Start exactly where you are. Yeah. Well, you know how you were saying that we're not taught anything, right? And I think that part of the stigma with women in debt is this feeling of like, oh, I'm dumb. I'm not intelligent. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, like other people know this, but I don't. Like, I must be stupid, right? Which yes. is obviously not true. So how how would you go about, like, what would be the first step to removing debt from your identity, removing, you know, making them separate. So first off, I think that it depends on how long you've had it attached to your identity, right? Mm -hmm. Like how long has it truly been attached and you've been having these underlying feelings and thoughts because we have to give ourselves permission to take time to remove that from us. 
um, because it takes time to build it on. I was very lucky in the sense that I started young. I realized at 24 and I didn't let myself sit with those feelings for 10 more years. And I think that would have been a lot harder. I was just like, what happened? I don't, I don't, I don't even know how I got here. I better, I better, you know, remove myself from this situation. And I think that giving yourself grace and knowing it's going to take time, knowing it's going to take time and then really questioning the thoughts that enter your mind, because you said it best when you said women think I'm like, I must be dumb. But one thing that I've learned from years of therapy is that our <laughs> love therapy. On yes. Show. Oh my gosh. <laughs> our thoughts lie to us. Yeah. You can't believe just, everything you think. No. And, and just because your thought might be about money, doesn't make it true. Right. I think we're good about calling out some of those thoughts with other things, but why not with our finances? So yeah. I would say calling out those thoughts as lies, learning, um, and then taking steps forward to write a budget, to pay off debt, to see progress, to celebrate the wins along the way so that you stay motivated. Yeah. Wow. Celebrating the wins is a big that's one. A, that's a big I've one. I've had to recently, like, if I feel stuck or something or just like, oh, mm -hmm. why? I always have to step back and be like, okay, let me write down like 10 yes. things that have actually been wins. And that really does help mm -hmm. reframe yes. your mindset. And, you know, with everything going on with the pandemic, women have been hurt so much mm. financially, especially um, women of color and millennial women. They are the hardest hit when it mm. comes oh, to, wow. yes, it was studies. I mean, there's all these studies out there. You have millennial women who usually are like moms have to stay home because childcare cl closes, you know, women of color have been one of the hardest hit people. And we're sitting around thinking, well, you might have gone into debt during this pandemic, right? Mm. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of women mm -hmm. who have gone into debt in the past year. And when they start paying that debt off, it's very easy to say, gosh, if this hadn't happened, I wouldn't have gone into this debt. Right, and instead right. of looking at it like that, being able to say, wow, I was able to pay off my credit card. I was able to pay off my thousand dollar credit card bill. Let me move on to the next one. Like this was awesome of me. Look at what I just did. So right. it's reframing that and giving yourself permission to accept what happened, but still celebrate the act of moving forward. Just because the act of moving forward means that you're getting rid of something you didn't want, doesn't mean that it's not worth celebrating. Yeah. And I think also you look so like if in your position, right, you had $111,000. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at that number and you're like, you know, even I'm, if you pay off 10,000, you're like, oh, well, I still have, yeah. right. you know, like you have to, to, to it feels so look at how big, far right. you've come then like looking at the future, like, oh, wow, I have so much further mm -hmm. to go because you, you can lose that motivation. So you're right. Like taking it in little steps at a time and celebrating those little steps and not like, okay, I still have a huge mountain to climb. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, and that's just like for life too. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, it's can be applicable to really anything. Mm -hmm. And I recommend having someone you can turn to maybe an accountability partner. It doesn't even have to be someone who's on the same journey, but someone who you can turn to and say, I did this thing. And not everyone else in my life and everyone else in the world is going to understand the gravity of this thing, but you do and yeah. have that person <laughs> celebrate with you. Like there is just so much power in that. And it's what's so incredible with social media is women are finding each other over social media, never having met in person and able to celebrate. Like I have women who I work with who have teamed up to be accountability people and oh, they message each awesome. other on Facebook, never having met each other and they are each other's person. And so it's, oh, it's just so, cool. so incredible. Yeah. It's so funny. Literally right before, before we had this conversation with you, I was uh -huh. telling Natalie, like you are my person who like celebrates me and I'm so Aww. thankful for you. Cause I just bought a house and, and she just like has one above and beyond and just like making it a big deal for me. And I was like, thank you so much. And like, not that it's a, an accountability thing, but just having someone to like cheer you on, like yeah. for the big moments is so important. And the small moments. And the small ones. And the we small all ones. need a Natalie. We all need <laughs> a Natalie. <laughs> we do all need a Natalie. A hundred 
hundred percent. Um, but you just mentioned your clients and I'm curious, um, like with the, the women that you work with, mm-hmm. how have you seen their relationship to their debt change? Like, is there any like story that you have or, or a client that like really, you know, inspired mm-hmm. you? Oh my gosh. Yes. So I mean, two come to mind. One is a single mom who was in debt and she actually through going through the system that I've created this like step-by-step system, which eliminates you having to worry about all these other things. She was able to pay off debt and she has over $15,000 saved in emergency fund as hey, a single mom for her love son. An like, emergency fund. I know like <laughs> I'm, it is just so incredible. And her people are the people inside of our membership. So her accountability system is there as a single mom. She, she needed that. Um, and then another one, Ashley, she said that she started 2020, right? Like a rough year, 2020, Mm -hmm. she started it and she raised her credit score in that first year by over a hundred (gasps) points. She paid off $15,000 worth of debt. And she said, there's, she said, there's no way I would have been able to continue on because I would have lost track along the way. Right. It's it, when it's a journey, when it is hard, it is, it's normal to lose your, you lose your footing. It's normal to lose steam. And, and when that happens, that's when you need someone else kind of like reminding you, Hey, get up, let's go. You know, you can do this. Let's go. And that's the difference. I think that having an accountability person or having a step-by-step system helps with. Yeah. And even as you were saying that, just especially because everything's digital, like we don't mm-hmm. use cash very much. It's so, it yeah. is so easy to lose track of mm-hmm. everything. Really. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it really is. But just overall, I think seeing women when they have these unexpected expenses come up, realizing they don't have to go into debt for them. They, because, because they've set up emergency funds, you know, women realizing that they are worth celebrating, even though they have debt. Um, it's just been an incredible, incredible thing to witness. Yeah. I yeah. love how you turned this, this struggle in your life, right? This huge, mm-hmm. um, hurdle that you overcame and, and, and are now empowering people like just way to turn something negative into a positive like Mm -hmm. good for you you are so inspiring and like doing such great work and it's amazing yeah we love (laughs) well thank you Uh, you know sorry go ahead Natalie oh I was gonna say we have one final question for you oh yeah what is it which is what let's say one of our listeners is in debt and they're like okay I need an actionable step Mm -hmm. what would be the first actionable step that you would tell them to take to take towards paying off their debt? So I would say total it up. You need to know your numbers. Mm-hmm. So know exactly, you know, how many debts you have. Because so often we almost just like shove it in this closet, close the door, and we're not even aware. Mm-hmm. Pull it out. Figure out exactly how much you have. How much are the interest rates? How much are the minimum payments? And then from there, you can develop a plan. You can decide how you want to pay off that debt in which order. So now it's not just this thing sitting there. You don't know what to do next, but you've laid it all out on the table. You know exactly what each debt is costing you essentially, and you know which one you want to tackle next. Yeah, that, breaking it down makes it so much mm-hmm. easier. Yeah, oh, yeah, it can become this big thing in your head. Well, Allison, I think you are so amazing. And like I said earlier, like what you're doing is really changing people's lives. I think when you empower people with the knowledge and especially in your finances, like I've said this before, even with our podcast, like we want to bring this to mm-hmm. so many more women because when you start building credit, when you start having an emergency fund, all this stuff, like it really changes your life, like in your quality of life. And now you can buy a home and now you can achieve all of these things. And so what you're doing is really, really special work and you have such great energy and I'm so glad you're on the podcast. Yes. Yes. And I think a huge thing that you do, Allison, that is something that we really try to like drive home is that it doesn't have to be intimidating. Like it, like, yes, all the jargon, all the numbers, like it's, it mm-hmm. looks like, oh, how am I ever going to know this? But once you really break it down, mm-hmm. knowledge is power and mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be so scary. Like looking at your yeah. bank account, looking your debt in the face, it actually doesn't have to be this monster that it's, it feels yes. like it is, you know? 
And on that note, it, you don't have to be perfect with it. Yeah, you know, right. I feel like there's that, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're human. You're going to mess up. You're going to overspend in areas just because you overspend once in a month or whatever doesn't, doesn't take back all the progress you've made. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. a great, a great point. Great way to end it. Yeah. yeah. And we want to have you back on to talk about budgeting. budgeting. That's yes. the next oh, I one. I love and, talking about budgeting. <laughs> and uh, just, just know that I am so, I need that We episode. were on your website the other night and she was like, I got to print off these. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because you have all this stuff. We're going to link yes. all, yeah. to all of the things that you're doing in our show notes so that our listeners can connect with you and, mm-hmm. and, maybe even get coached by you. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your night, evening, day. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you.